Have you ever been a little jealous of someone? Why were you jealous? Has anyone ever been jealous of you? Why? Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. Today's episode is another Greek myth. It seems like a lot of our listeners really enjoyed our last Greek myth. This one is the story of a princess called Psyche. Her name means breath or spirit. And she was so beautiful that the goddess Aphrodite became consumed with jealousy and set out to make life very difficult for poor Psyche. Thanks to all of you who have been signing up for my newsletter and are enjoying all kinds of fun resources to make your story time even more enjoyable. You can still sign up at www.kathleenpelly.com and start enjoying some free colouring sheets immediately. Let's take a journey with Psyche and Eros. Long, long ago in ancient Greece, there lived three princesses. Psyche, the youngest, was very kind. She was also very beautiful. Now one day, high on Mount Olympus, Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, heard about Psyche, and she was very jealous. All the young men in the kingdom were so afraid of what the great goddess might do to them if they dared to pay attention to Psyche, that they refused to go near her, and none of them would offer their hand in marriage. When her two sisters married, Psyche had to stay at home with her father, and in those days girls were expected to marry someone, and so her poor father went off to consult the oracle at Delphi. The oracle told her father that while no man would ever marry his daughter, there was a creature who lived on the top of a mountain that would take her. Sadly, the king took Psyche to the top of a tall mountain and left her there. But no sooner was she left alone on that mountain top than a gentle west wind lifted her up and swooped her off to a faraway palace. It was the home of Eros, the lonely god of love. Eros was a handsome young man, but he had a pair of very big wings. He did not wish to scare Psyche, and so he made himself invisible. And he warned Psyche that if she valued his love, not to try to catch a glimpse of him. He treated Psyche with great gentleness, and every night they talked and laughed together, and soon Psyche found herself falling in love with this invisible man. For some time they lived together in great contentment, but after a while Psyche missed her family so much that Eros agreed to allow her to invite her sisters for a visit. But when her sisters came and saw this luxurious palace and all the riches it contained, they were overcome with jealousy and they set out to convince Psyche that she was being fooled. He's not a normal man, said one sister. He is probably a horrid, ugly monster, said the other sister. After all, if he loved you, why would he not show himself to you? But he's so kind, so gentle, Psyche argued. He cannot be a monster, I would know. He's fooling you, Psyche, trust us. The sisters returned home, dissatisfied with their own lives and jealous of Psyche's. Psyche cried and cried and cried. But one night, she took a lamp in one hand and a dagger in the other, and she crept into her host's bedroom. Instead of the monster she expected to find, she saw Eros, a handsome young man with two white wings. She was not frightened at all, but a drop of oil from the lamp she held fell on the sleeping guard. He woke instantly. He saw his psyche leaning over him with a dagger in her hand, and with great sorrow he spread his wings and flew away. 
Psyche crumbled to the floor. How foolish she had been to listen to her sisters. She ran outside to the river. She threw herself into the water and she expected to drown, but Pan, the god of shepherds, pulled her safely from the water. Aphrodite is the goddess of love. Ask her for help, Pan advised her. So Psyche went to the temple of Eros's mother and asked for help. Aphrodite appeared before her and told her, I will help you if you can complete three tasks. Then she scattered a huge heap of mixed grains on the floor. Sort this mess into three neat piles. And with that she disappeared. Poor Psyche did not know how to complete such an impossible task. But just then, an army of ants crawled under the door. Oh, please, can you help me? she begged. And they did. Aphrodite was furious. So she set another task even harder than the first. Over by that stream are some sheep. Fetch me a bag of their golden fleece. Psyche set off for the river, but when she got there, she discovered a herd of angry rams. Poor Psyche feared for her very life, but suddenly she heard a voice whisper, Wait until noon, when they lie asleep in the shade. And she did. When Psyche handed over the fleece to Aphrodite, the goddess fumed with rage. She set a third task, which was the hardest of all. Very well, she said, handing Psyche a golden cup. Fill this with water from the river Styx. Psyche trembled with fear, for in order to complete this task, she knew she would have to die, as that was the only way to cross the river into the land of shades. Still, she set off on her journey, and in a short while, an eagle swooped down from the sky and snatched the cup from her hands. Moments later, he returned the cup, brimming with water. Now that Psyche had completed all three tasks, Eros suddenly appeared before her. You have come back, cried Psyche. I never left, replied Eros, for all along, it had been Eros who sent the ants and the eagle, and it was Eros who told her how to gather the fleece. Then Eros gathered Psyche into his arms and flew them back to his palace. It took a while, but eventually Eros convinced his mother Aphrodite to accept Psyche as his wife. With Aphrodite's help, he convinced the great Zeus to admit Psyche to the ranks of the immortal gods. In celebration, Psyche and Eros threw a party at the palace. Apollo played his lyre, Dionysus brought the wine, and all the gods rejoiced. As for Eros and Psyche, they lived happily ever after. And to this day, that is why love and soul will never part. Well, that Aphrodite was one jealous goddess, wasn't she? And so were Psyche's sisters. I wonder, can you think of any other characters from some of the fairy tales you may have heard who were also jealous? might be a fun activity to do with your friends. See who can come up with the longest list of jealous characters from fairy tales. You know a lot of the fairy tales use bits and pieces from these ancient Greek myths such as this. You might want to try it yourself when next you write a story of your own. It's fine to borrow bits and pieces from these old stories and add them to your own stories that you write. Cheerio then. Join me next time for... Journey with Story.